Hello, this is Ivan Irons, and welcome to day five. Today we're going to go over CNC control, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, you can go to cncinformation.com and get a little bit further information. So let's get to it. Here again are the five different steps to the CNC process that we've been walking through, and you'll see controlling down there at the bottom. Uh, once we're done with this, we'll do machining, and then we'll kind of be at the end of our process. So we're on the controlling step, and that's directing the machine's motion, and you'll see in the flow chart here right kind of where we're at. So what is CNC control? Well, I think of it as three different things together. But what we're using is a control computer, control software, and a CNC controller that will direct our mechanical machine, whether that be a router or a mill or a lathe. We're going to need these different components. Sometimes they're combined together, but uh, really if you go through and you build your own, and a lot of commercial units will actually have these separate as well. So we'll start out with the CNC control computer. You're going to need a computer out there. Now it doesn't need to be the newest, fastest thing. It's really only going to have one program on it, and that's going to be your control software. And that control software is going to walk through that G code that we made in our last video during the CAM process. And that G-code, it isn't too complex or sophisticated. It's actually pretty simple, so you don't need a lot of brain power in your computer. And also keep in mind that your control computer is going to be in a pretty rough, rugged environment. So I think of my CNC plasma cutter. puts out quite a bit of smoke and dust, and uh, that goes to the computer in some way shape or form. Now you can do a number of things to keep it away but you know what a lot of it ends up there. Uh, don't kid yourself. So usually what I recommend is to go with something that's uh, a lower cost unit that you really won't get uh, too mad about if it gets damaged uh, out in your shop. Here's a look at this is my, C my control computer for my CNC plasma cutter. And it's actually a 486 uh, Pentium. So if you know anything about computers, that was about 1996 era. And it has all the horsepower I need uh, to run my G-code programs. You can pick these up for 10, 20 bucks. People give them to me. And I have actually a stack of three of these at my house. So if this one goes bad from plasma smoke and dust I can just put another one there and uh, move on so again I don't concern myself too much about this control computer the next is control software and that software is what executes that G code program it walks line by line as we saw earlier it goes through each of those steps and directs our machine now there's a bunch of uh, different control programs on the market I'm a huge fan of Mach 3 by Artsoft. Um, it's, a, it's kind of a organic control program that's grown over the last, I don't know, five or six years and has a huge community of supporters and people that help out with it. Um, but I've also used Turbo CNC and CNC Pro, uh, the DOS versions of those. So just, just so you know, there's a number of them out there on the market. Here's a look at uh, the uh, a screenshot of Mach. It's about what your computer is going to look like when you have it fired up. Uh, you load up a G-code program and uh, you start up the cycle and you'll be able to watch it move around. And actually in a few of my other CNC videos I have, you've probably seen that, seen me use this software. And then kind of the third piece is the CNC controller. Now that controller, it processes the signal from the computer and the software. So the software spits it out, it goes out a cable and goes to a controller. And it turns that signal into motion. And these controllers, there's a number of uh, different suppliers out there. And you can also make these as a do-it-yourself kit. 
and they're really available in a number of different axes so you can have a uh, two axes controller three or four axes controller and if you do go out and, and buy a controller from a supplier most of those kits they come with motors and cables uh, as a part of the kit so let me explain motors a little bit there's really two different types of motors that are used in CNC I'd say the most often and those are servo motors and stepper motors and there's a cost differential there as well I won't go into it too much but just so you know if you go out and buy a controller odds are it's gonna have kind of everything that you need here's a look at a controller that is on my CNC wood router I purchased this controller uh, like I said, you can make these, and there's a lot of people in CNC that this is the piece that they really like and enjoy, the electronics side of it. Now, I'm not really an electronics guy. I'm more of a fabricator. So any chance that I get that I can buy this lock, stock, and barrel from someone, uh, I do it. And so I, I spec these out in a certain way that I want them with the number of axes, and I have this, and I have that kind of going on. But you'll see the front there and then the rear of it where you plug in your cabling. So this is an example of a controller. Here you'll see a couple more on the left. Uh, this is the controller that's on the side of my Bridgeport mill. Completely enclosed. Came with the mill when I purchased it as a, uh, a part of the entire package. And then on the right, that's a older, uh, kind of solid state looking controller. And that's really a combination of that CNC control computer software and the controller all in one. So today they're broken apart a little bit more. But uh, in the past when CNC was really just a production uh, you know, phenomenon, this could be included all together in one unit. So I thought I'd briefly kind of go over some costs just so you have an idea in, a, in your head if you're going to put one of these together. That control computer um, that we originally started out with, I'd rather be on the zero end of that versus the thousand dollar end of it. Some people will uh, spend the extra money to get the fastest thing possible. It's not needed and in fact the vast majority of the time you can buy a computer secondhand at a garage sale and it'll just work out great. The control software costs, um, like any software, there's a free one out there. There's a high-end one. I think I got my Mach uh, 3 for like $150, my license, and I can't remember. I think it, maybe I bought it in a combo package with Sheet Cam back when I did. But I think it was around $150 for that. Uh, for the control software costs actually I have that for the controller it should say versus the control software costs the controller those that's where you're gonna spend your money here and like I said before it really depends on the number of axes that you select now you can get also think of it as uh, smaller motors for something that doesn't really need a lot of force to move around for example a plasma cutter it can have smaller steppers or servos um, it's not like you have any side loading or side force like you do in a router where you're pushing through material and similar on a mill where you're pushing through material. So those can fall on the low end of things. And then if you get into a fourth axis uh, and you buy it from someone and you have big uh, steppers or servos that come with it, uh, you can easily be into the $5,000 range without trying. So that's just kind of a, a look at the different costs. Tomorrow we go into CNC machining. So we'll use our controllers and run our G code and talk about uh, the true machining process. Now CNC machining, very similar to regular machining, but uh, just controlled by a computer. In the meantime, if you have any questions at all, feel free to go to my website at www.cncinformation.com.